got a super thanks to begin today's mailbag from Mighty Ant, my guy. Says Justin Herbert is not good enough to elevate his team. Now with some luck with both wide receivers gone, rely on Lad McConkey, Quinton Johnson, a rookie and a second-year receiver that eight receivers picked after him, played better all season. This is in reference to the ESPN quarterback rankings. I think what Mighty Ant's getting to, and this has been a complaint I've had, not just with Dak, I think it's pretty common across all of football media. The standards are not equally applied. The standard is not the standard for, for everybody. It's, it's simply not. And in some cases, that's fine. But the, the, the criticisms we use to prop up one guy, tear down the other, are not equally applied. And that I think I, I totally get why that can be so frustrating. We make a justified big deal about Dak's playoff results, even though in the process... We're ignoring the fact that you're already in really good category to be eligible for that playoff result. Like, people are like, oh, Kyler Murray's better. I'm like, but why? And they go, well, Dak's bad in the playoffs. I go, have you watched Kyler? Had the worst play I've ever seen in my life. That's, that was a, of like a good quarterback. And Kyler's good. Imagine if Dak blew the, blew the lead that the Chargers did with Herbert. Would be brought up every single day. For, the, for Chargers and the Herbert? Well, we ignore it. And I think draft position still carries way too much impact. You saw it with some of the other position rankings ESPN did. Uh, that was a super thanks. It's just like a super chat, except you can do it on demand. It's a feature here on YouTube. Any message you send in, we had one last week that said, Tom, you suck. We'll still put it on the show. As long as it's within reason. Don't be one of the isms. That's the only ask I have. From Mark, several super chats in a row here. We'll, we will get to all of these. He is good enough to win you a Super Bowl. My issue is he's not a quarterback to reset the market with him. His stats come versus poor defenses the majority of the time. Aloha. Um, I'll, get to, I'll get to this one first. Actually, let, 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 let's hit them all. Let's, let, let's hit them all. JJ has no plan. That's why we are in a pickle. When he puts up huge numbers, it's Dak's a stud. When he can't move the ball versus better Ds, we blame coaching. If you believe Dak is your guy, sign him and save money. Too late for that now. If you don't like him, then draft or trade for someone else. We didn't do that either. It's a really good point, by the way. Uh, there's one more from him we'll get to in, uh, as well. That's my main point, too. Uh, if you demand huge, you should do everything to improve. You are a pro, and if that means study more, you do it. Oh, this is, this is about Micah. Damn, I misread that. We'll come back to this one and go back to the DAC conference because I think it's a good one. I agree. Like, you've, you, you should have made up your mind by now. Like, either you pay him and you save some money or you don't. I think when it comes to the reset the market, every quarterback does it these days. Like they, they all do. Or do we think that like Trevor Lawrence did it and like he was bad last year down the stretch? Jordan Love's about to do it, as the filming he has him, but I think he will. Two of might. Like Derek Carr was once the highest paid quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo was once the highest paid quarterback. Everyone does it. Everyone, unless that quarterback says no, I'm gonna choose to, to take less. That's just how it works. Because most teams go with the, hey, if you're our franchise guy, the $5 million we're haggling over, we'll figure out how to make it work. From Tim, if the Browns don't want to pay Amari, reunion. It's not going to happen. I love it. It makes sense. They never replaced him properly thanks to failing with Michael Gallup. It's just, it just, it's just not going to happen. Um, the Amari might still live in Dallas. I don't think the Browns will trade him because they need him. And, uh, you know, things got personal from the Cowboys front office perspective. And they, they messed that one up. They, they, let their they let themselves get in their feelings about Amari Cooper, and it cost them. So name a player. It's the meme, right, of it's, uh, I miss him so much, and it's, it's a player with, with the, the Spider-Man meme, right? Who is that player for you? Let me know in the comments section of today's show. Eli Aaron, a $2 Super Chat, says, say hi to Law Nation Sports. I love Law. He does fantastic work. So hi to you, Law. By the way, in general, if I can go on like my pro Cowboys content creator stuff, there's a lot of good ones out there. There's a lot of really good Cowboys content creators. I would put our group up uh, for Cowboys people against any fan base in the NFL. I don't think anyone's got it better, even if the team disappoints us every year. Mark. If you demand, this is about Micah, so we got ahead of ourselves there. If you demand huge money, you should do everything to improve. You're a pro. If that means study more, you do it. Amazes me how players tell coaches what they will do. I don't necessarily disagree. Um, 
there's, there's a lot to unpack on that front there. And I, I, I get some potential concerns with, with Micah. I also go, he's had 13 sacks three years ago. That, that's incredibly hard to find. Like, you trade him for two firsts, whatever. You're spending one of those firsts on trying to get a player half as good. Or 80% of the way as good. So it's, it, it's a give and take. You know, Antonio Brown, this, I'm not saying Mike is AB. I want to make that very clear. But like extreme example. AB, I think, very clearly was a nutcase the entire time. Like, I, I'm convinced of it. I, I, I think Mike Tomlin should be a Hall of Fame coach because I am absolutely convinced that Antonio Brown was an insane person his entire time and Tomlin found a way to manage it. I'm convinced of that. I think that's what the great coaches do. And I think that's part of the task on McCarthy's plate this year. Again, not nearly as extreme. But AB was the best receiver in the NFL for like five years in a row. Mike can be, can be the pass rusher. Now, the Cowboys turnover chain is available over at chatsports.com slash Cowboys chain. We'll put that link in the comments section and the description of today's show. That's chatsports.com slash Cowboys chain. This is the Navy chain link one. This is the silver that I've got. But it's, it's the same it's the same foam uh, Cowboys logo on there. From the great Duke Bothers, I'm just as angry with you with the CD situation. If he has to hold out into the season... What's the backup plan at wide receiver? There isn't one. It's not Jalen Tolbert or Jalen Burrow. Because like, there's, not, there's not a good backup plan. I'll say this. I don't think Lamb holds out in, into the season. Because I am convinced the Cowboys will come to their senses. Whether it's the day before camp, two days after, three, a week in, August. They'll get it done. Because I just... Maybe I'm being naive and optimistic here. I can't see a scenario in which Dallas goes, actually, you know what? No, this is the one we're actually going to play hardball on. They always cave. Always. And this is like the best person to cave to. You don't want to cave to Dak? Okay. You don't want to cave to Micah? Okay. Lamb? Get that done. For Mark, not saying Trey Levin, just he's not being a pro. And I don't think it's... It, I get where you're coming from. I don't think it's not that he's not being a pro. It's that, you know, he's, he's a B or whatever. Whatever grade we, we, we want to assign him. He can do more. And I think with that whole Malik Hooker drama was the exact same thing. But it just, that didn't, was, that wasn't conveyed properly, which, you know, is, it's the Cowboy circus that happens all too frequently. It, and this is, not a, this is not an issue unique to Micah, by the way. And there's, there's way worse examples of people who didn't want to work. David Irving didn't want to work. Like, that guy could have been just as good as Micah Parsons, but he literally gave zero shits about trying at his job. That's why he's, he, he wanted to, be a, uh, to, be, to, to do all this other crap that, he didn't, that wasn't related to football and didn't care and said he, he was like, I could show up out of, out of shape and dominate. And that's, Micah's in shape. He cares. David Irving didn't care. I think there's a big, big difference there. From Tyler. What are your player comparisons for our 2024 rookies? Guys like Light and BB have high potential, but Leah Fowl and later picks seem like they already peaked. I don't know if that's true, actually. Um, if anyone, I wonder if BB's got the higher floor and the lower ceiling, because he's kind of physically maxed out, I think. Guyton is not. Like, Guyton has the high ceiling. Um, Leah Fowl, I think athletically, Leah Fowl probably isn't going to get a ton better, but I think there is. And I think I think I undervalued his football IQ, and that's that's a big deal for me. Um, oh, Ryan Flournoy is not Pete, but I, I think I think for Guyton, it's that you, you the ceiling is Tyler Smith, which would be awesome to have two of those guys, right? You know, BB's not going to become Travis Frederick, but he can be like top ten center, I think, like absolute peak, not year one, but he can be he can be what Biotis was by the end of the year, easily. From Bobby, to trade TJ Bass for a starting DT. So I, I made the comment on our salary cap video of with the way the cap works, it, it's not the I will gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today thing. It's that you're paying for a hamburger Tuesday to get one today, except that you've, you're going to get two burgers on Tuesdays. So it's fine. I do think trading TJ Bass for a defensive tackle I think that is, I will gladly pay you for a ham, uh, Tuesday for a hamburger today. You're fixing your DT need, and guess what happens next year? Shit, now I need a, a right guard. I just tr traded 
one away. So it better be. I, I, I am a fan of TJ Bass. I think he can start in the NFL. I want him to take over for Zach Martin whenever he retires. I'll probably just keep him. And I will convince somebody that Josh Ball's good. And I'll take a, a you know, what I don't want to risk doing. Here, here's what I don't want to do. I don't want to have, this is a long answer, so I'm sorry. I don't want to have a Parker Ehringer for Charvarius Ward trade. That is my concern. You remember that? Charvarius Ward was on the Cowboys. So shut up, Bobby Bell. He nailed the Ward. You know, he loved him. And they had him and said, we have cornered up. We need a guard. And they flipped Ward for Parker Ehringer, who got hurt and did nothing for the Cowboys and then was out of the NFL. And low-key was an awful trade because Ward's a tough fringe top 10 corner. And they gave him away for nothing. I don't want to do that, do that with TJ Bass. That, that is my concern. So let's, put, let's talk trade some more here. Put your realistic trade ideas in the comments. Sound off for me in the comments of today's show. From Al Walton, it's not rocket scientist. Dak is a very good QB. He needs weapons and an O-line, period. But yeah. Yeah. I would also say, and I, I think that's what you're saying too, Al, to, but to add, add to it, who doesn't? Everyone does. Like you, you, you need to be aggressive and build your supporting cast around your quarterback in your window, window because that's what all the other teams are doing. That's what the aggressive win-now teams are doing. If you want to always be a playoff team, the Cowboys' plan is fine, as long as the quarterback's healthy. But if you want to win a championship and other teams are maximizing 10 to 15 to 20% more than you are, you're setting yourself up for failure. Martin, if the Cowboys are rebuilding, who is untouchable? From a reality standpoint, like Tyler Guyton, your first-round pick, your, your other like recent picks who are good, Tyler Smith, CeeDee Lamb. You can't physically trade Marshawn Nealand right now, so him, maybe Bland. I think that's it. Like, I think that's honestly it. I think everyone else you'd listen to. That doesn't mean you're going to trade them. But like everyone else, like, okay, you need the picks. We're going to tear it down to the studs. There you go. Who do you think? It's a good question. Beyond 2025 and beyond, which I think kind of takes Zach Martin out of the equation, by the way. Who is the best player on the Cowboys right now? Let me know in the comments of today's show. From Mark. Does Jerry Jones realize that the extra money he now has to pay CD and Dak is the money he could have used to re-sign Hankins? It was cheap insurance. Mozzie does not impress. I still don't know if the Cowboys actually made an offer to, job, to, to Hankins, by the way. I, that offer, I know there was reporting of it. I have heard that was not the case. Um, look, the, the Cowboys operate their way, and I don't like the way it is, to be honest. From Mark, who poll, who wants Tom for GM over Skeletor, a.k.a. Jerry Jones? I'll do it for free. I'll do it for free. So, are you a Cowboys fan? I know, I, I think everyone here is, and it's fine to disagree on how we think the best way to maximize this. I think that's what makes this fun. If you're a Cowboys fan, though, and not an Eagles fan, hit that sub button, youtube.com slash at Cowboys TV. Last one, a $5 super chat from Abja Pawar. Do you feel like Dak has been done dirty by the front office, bad coaching, and play calling? A good time to mention this, I feel like. It's all, re it's all relative, right? I, I do think there have been failures of the organization. I think keeping Jason Garrett for so long was a disaster. I don't think Mike McCarthy's a top 10 NFL head coach. It can be worse. Like, you know who's been done dirty? I, I, there have been... Teams that have set up their quarterbacks for way, way less success. I, I, I think like Daniel Jones has been done dirty by his offensive line. I, I think the way the Cowboys have publicly handled Dak Prescott hasn't been good. Nobody else talks this way. Nobody else does this stuff. They'll pay other quarterbacks. Bad coaching, bad play calling. Whatever the hell the Patriots were doing with Mac Jones was doing him dirty. Dak's been in a better spot than that. But if the but the bar is not, you know, top 20, top 15, it's, it's championship level. And from that perspective, it got to be an A. I don't know if they've been a D for dirty, 
There's been moments it's been maybe a B or something. 